How's it going everybody? My name is Lucky Buns, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing my road to legend in Season 9 of Pokemon Go Battle League. Now as always, if you guys do end up enjoying the video, if you could please smash that like button down below, it would help me out a ton with the YouTube algorithm. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So this season starts off like any other, getting to rank 20, which really wasn't that difficult and I actually ended up investing an Elite Fast TM into my Pidgeot for the Great League, and that made things really fun. Now for those of you who don't know, Pidgeot was actually banned during Season 8 because Feather Dance, the new exclusive moveset, was completely broken. So after an entire season of not getting to use Pidgeot, a lot of people, including myself, really wanted to run it. And let me just tell you right now, that was definitely an excellent investment. I'm very happy with my Pidgeot for the Great League. So that pretty much uh, took me all the way to rank 20. Uh, my win ratio was about 124 out of 205, which would come out to about 60%. So that wasn't too bad. We ended up getting to about 2075 ELO, which isn't really the best, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal because we have an entire season to work our way up. Shortly after that, I ended up getting my first shiny legendary of the season, which was a shiny Lugia. This was also a new shiny for me, and you know, it's really surprising because we had Lugia come back into rotation so many times, but I just never got a shiny, so this was super exciting. By the end of the Great League rotation, I had climbed all the way up to around the 2300s, which is pretty solid. Now from here, it was time for Ultra League. So for Open Ultra League, I wanted to try out a few different teams. I wasn't in a rush to climb all the way up to Legend this season, and I just wanted to have some fun with it. So what I ended up running was Obstagoon, Sylveon, and Scizor. Obstagoon had Counter, Night Slash, and Hyper Beam. Sylveon had Charm, Psy Shock, which is an exclusive moveset, and Moonblast. And then Scizor had Bullet Punch, Iron Head, and Night Slash. So this is basically like a double dark line, which uh, definitely had a sneak attack with the Hyper Beam there, so that worked pretty well. All in all, during the Ultra League rotation, we didn't move around too much, as I was really just anticipating Ultra League Premier Cup later on in the season. Why Niantic didn't give us Ultra League Premier Cup earlier is beyond me, because that would have been awesome, but hey. It is what it is, right? So uh, during this rotation though, we were able to get our second shiny legendary from Go Battle League and that was going to be a shiny Azelf. Now following the Ultra League rotation, Master League was going to be coming up next, but we also had the option to play Little Cup, which is a 500 CP cup. So this was actually pretty affordable, a lot of the investments didn't cost that much Stardust, and you didn't even really need the secondary charge move on certain Pokemon. This made building Pokemon really, really easy. So the team that I ended up using for the Little Jungle Cup was Shadow Golbat, Dino, and Shadow Swinub. So for Shadow Golbat, I ended up using Wing Attack plus Poison Fang. The extra secondary charge move was honestly unnecessary. Uh, Poison Fang is pretty much the go-to most of the time, and especially in a 500 CP Cup, the Pokemon are extremely glassy. For Dino, I ended up running Dragon Breath, Body Slam, and Crunch, and then when it came down to Swinub, I had Powder Snow, Icy Wind, and Body Slam. So this was definitely a pretty well-rounded team, and it actually got me all the way to Veteran, which I did not expect, so yeah. Pretty early on in the season, we were able to get to Veteran, so I was definitely happy about that. Unfortunately, after a few days of the Little Jungle Cup, there was definitely a big meta shift that I couldn't really adjust to. So at that point, I just kind of stayed around the 2300 to 2400 range. And now with that rotation out of the way, we're moving back on over to Great League. So during Great League, we also had the option to run the Halloween Cup, which was actually a pretty good meta. So for this meta, I actually ended up going with Drapion, Nidoqueen, and Wigglytuff. So I had to build the Drapion and the Nidoqueen. Unfortunately, I didn't have Frustration removed on my Shadow Nidoqueen, so that would have been really nice to use, but uh, we just ended up going with the regular Nidoqueen. I had a pretty good IV spread, so that was fine. Now, even though I did make Veteran pretty early on in the season, I did find it kind of difficult afterwards to climb past 2500 ELO. I was honestly stuck between the 2200s and the 2500s. Of course, though, the one league that I was actually looking forward to the most was coming up next, and that was going to be the Ultra League Premier Cup. So I was super stoked to see that Niantic actually brought back the Ultra League Premier Cup uh, Classic, which is pretty much level 40 Pokemon, no legendaries, yeah, it was gonna be awesome. Extra large Pokemon have definitely ruined a lot of Go Battle League in my opinion, and I've honestly talked about this plenty of times on the channel, but yeah, I was just really happy to actually have a pretty fair playing field. And honestly, after running it for two weeks, I can definitely say that it was one of the best metas we had the entire season. So I definitely had a lot of teams that I wanted to run during this rotation of Ultra League Premier Cup, but unfortunately I didn't have very much success with them. Uh, the team that actually ended up sticking with me for a little while was Obstagoon, Gengar, and Charizard. So again, Obstagoon with Night Slash and Hyper Beam, Gengar with um, Shadow Claw, Shadow Punch, and Focus Blast. 
and then Charizard with Wing Attack, Blast Burn, and Dragon Claw. That was actually a really solid team, especially when Trevenant actually came into the meta, this was pretty solid against it. But at the same time, I also wanted to grind for a Trevenant myself, so that became a top priority during the second half of the Halloween event. So once I was actually finished grinding up the uh, Phantom and I ended up getting a good IV spread for a Trevenant for the Ultra League Premier Cup, I shifted my teams once again. Now during the process of actually hunting for Phantom, we also ended up getting a 100% IV Darkrai from Raids, and we also got my first Shadow Shiny, a Shiny Sneasel, which was super exciting. So at this point, I also decided to build an Alolan Muck for the Ultra League. I had one sitting in my PvP potential tag for like a really, really long time, but I couldn't think of a reason to actually invest in it. Well, the combination of Trevenant, Alolan Muck, and Obstagoon is phenomenal. So after I went ahead and built the Trevenant and the Alolan Muck, this team took me all the way from the 2300s to 2665 before the shift to Master League and Master League Premier Cup. Now at this point in time, I was a little bit disappointed that I wasn't able to climb higher during the Ultra League Premier Cup rotation because I had finally found my rhythm with this team and I was doing pretty well. But unfortunately, I just found it a little bit too late during that rotation and uh, now we were in the next rotation for Master League, Master League Premier Cup Classic and the Kanto Cup. So at this point, I had to make a decision. I had to run one of these metas, right? Because I'm really close to Legend. I mean, I'm not like really close to Legend, but I'm pretty high up in ELO. I'm at the 2600s, so what am I gonna run? So Master League Open, definitely not an option. I don't have level 50 Pokemon, and uh, that was just not gonna go well with all the level 50 legendaries people have. Definitely not the league for me. The biggest problem with Kanto Cup was that there's going to be so many extra large Chansey plus other extra large Pokemon running around, and uh, I just knew that wasn't gonna work out very well for me. So I had to think about the last one, right, which was going to be Master League Premier Cup Classic. This one had a level 40 cap just like the Ultra League Premier Cup Classic, there were no legendary Pokemon allowed, and it seemed like the best choice. Like, even though you kind of had to have good IVs on your Pokemon, you didn't necessarily need to have Hundos. I mean, like, it's always kind of been said that you kind of have to have Hundos, but you can actually get away with a little bit less. Like, I actually ran a Metagross with 98% IVs, 14 attack, 15 defense and 15 HP. So with the Metagross, I would lose CMP, but it wasn't actually that big of a deal if I played it out correctly. So as I just mentioned, Metagross was part of my upcoming team. And uh, just to finish off on what I was saying here, I knew that I just needed to study the meta really, really well. And I actually had a chance to get to Legend if I just did that. Now, when it came down to the Master League Premier Cup Classic, the meta wasn't actually that big. It was pretty condensed, which made things a lot easier for me to adjust to. On top of that, I also watched Twitch streamers like every single day in terms of what they were using, what they were running into. And I really just tried to study it as much as I possibly could before running my battles. So the team that I ended up building at first was Dragonite with Dragon Breath, Dragon Claw, and Outrage. I'm sorry, not Outrage, Hurricane. And then I also had a Mamoswine with Powder Snow, Bulldoze, and Avalanche. And then finally, the last Pokemon was Metagross with Meteor Mash. I'm sorry. Bullet Punch, Meteor Mash, and Psychic, not Earthquake. So Earthquake is actually the recommended moveset that you go for on Metagross, but because of all the Gyarados that were actually in the meta now with Aqua Tail and Crunch, which was recently boosted, uh, Metagross with Psychic actually gave me a bit more play. And that was actually a conscious decision that not a lot of people were making during this rotation, which gave me an edge to actually climb up a ton. But how much did I actually climb during this rotation? So I just told you guys I was around the 2600s when Ultra League Premier Cup ended. I did have to adjust to using this team, so I went all the way down to around the 2500s, like mid 2500s. And then from there, once I got into the rhythm, I climbed all the way to Expert, and after Expert, we got all the way to 2974 ELO running this team. Yeah, it was that good. So uh, this was definitely one of my favorite teams to run until the meta shifted. So at this point, obviously I had to adjust my team as well. I couldn't keep running the same thing because I was getting hard countered left and right. This is definitely a tough thing to come to terms with when you are pushing for legend, especially when you make it so close, like as much as I did. I was literally at the gate and I just got hard countered during that last set. So that was really unfortunate. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just about adaptability, right? So. I knew that I had to adjust to the current meta that I was seeing. 
So I saw a lot of Magnezone. Magnezone is a steel type. I also saw plenty of Excadrill, plenty of Metagross. So I was seeing a theme here, right? I was seeing a double steel theme. So I had to think about what kind of team that I could run that was going to be really good against this meta. So I actually found a really great video from Home Slice Henry showcasing a team from Stop Alcatraz. This team consisted of Shadow Machamp, Chandelure, and Togekiss. So Shadow Machamp had Counter, Cross Chop, and Rock Slide. Chandelure had Incinerate, Flame Charge, and Shadow Ball. And then finally Togekiss had Charm, Ancient Power, and Flamethrower. Now this was definitely a difficult decision to make in terms of this investment because the Shadow Machamp cost a ridiculous amount of Stardust. Not to mention the Shadow Machamp that Stop Alcatraz was using in a Home Slice Henry's video was almost 100% IV. The best Shadow Machamp I had was an 82% IV with 15 attack. Now overall this Shadow Machamp was pretty solid, but it did miss a key bulk point against Togekiss. So I knew that was going to be a problem, but I was willing to give it a shot. So I invested in the Shadow Machamp, and we went ahead and started practicing. Of course I wasn't going to run my battles immediately and go Battle League, I messaged a couple of friends and we ran through a ton of different simulations running this team in terms of what I could be doing. And after about a day or two of practicing, I was able to get the team down, and at this point, it was time to run my battles and push for Legend. So from this point onward, I'm going to go ahead and showcase my battles now on my way to Legend. So we have a Garchomp lead, fantastic for our Togekiss. We're just going to stay in here. They swap into Togekiss, we're going to stay in. Their Togekiss is best buddied, so this is a little bit problematic, but not too much because we are going to beat them out. Alright, so we're just going to go for that Ancient Power directly. We'll see if they decide to shield. They do decide to shield, okay. So at this point, I swap into Chandelier. Now this could work, or this could be really, really bad for us. I figured keeping the Togekiss alive would help out with the Garchomp later though, so we're just going to try and farm down against this Togekiss. Successful so far, they didn't get to another Ancient Power, they were pretty far away to be honest though. Alright, so now they come in with the Garchomp, we're just going to go for that Shadow Ball directly. It might have paid off to go for a bait here, but in the end they didn't end up shielding, so that was actually okay. So we're going for another Shadow Ball here, most likely this will take a shield. Oh, actually never mind, so Garchomp goes down completely. And in the back, they have Gyarados. So this is a pretty common Pokemon to see in the Master League Premier Cup. At this point, we don't have too much play here, unfortunately, because it is running Waterfall, so this is going to destroy our Shadow Machamp. Of course, I do have to shield right here, though. But if we are able to get to two Rock Slides, we can definitely turn this. Unfortunately, though, it is not looking too great for us. But there's definitely some play here. So at this point, I'm counting, I'm counting, I'm counting. We are one hit away from the Rock Slide before they throw an Aqua Tail. If I would have Sack Swapped at that moment into the Togekiss, that would have actually been phenomenal because we would have been able to come back in with Shadow Machamp, most likely throw the Rock Slide or even a Cross Chop at this point, and that would have KO'd the Gyarados. So unfortunately we ended up losing that first match, but let's see if we can turn things around with the second one coming up. Alright, so we have a Milotic lead, we'll see what they're running. Are they going to be running Waterfall? Alright, looks like they're running Dragon Tail. Fantastic. So they also swapped into Gyarados with Waterfall. Not sure what they will probably have in the back, but we're just going to stick things out with Togekiss. is actually really good because we don't want to line this up with Chandelier. And getting rid of Gyarados now is going to be good for us later on the line, most likely. Alright, so going for the Ancient Power right here. They decide to shield. That is pretty good for us. We swap into the Shadow Machamp. Going to take the hit and then farm down and get some energy. This will be pretty good for what could potentially be in their back line. Might be a Metagross, but either way against uh, Milotic, that should be okay as well. We have a lot of energy loaded up here. So going for that Cross Chop immediately. I don't think we're going to be able to get to a second Cross Chop. Maybe. Actually, we do. Very nice. All right, so second Cross Chop going through right there. Doubt they're going to shield this. Yep, all right. So now we can come back in with Togekiss. Unfortunately, right there, I made a critical mistake. I came back in way too soon. I should have waited for the switch timer to go down a bit more, so then I could have swapped into Chandelure when this happened. So we definitely don't have the best odds here of winning, but we can still make it happen. So of course, I need to shield this right now. We have a ton of energy, so this is still possible, guys. This is still possible. We're going to go ahead and throw the Flame Charge immediately against the Milotic. They pretty much have to shield this. Like, they pretty much have to shield this. Alright, so the shield goes through right there. We throw one more hit, and I go for another Flame Charge. Now boosted. This should KO Milotic at this range. Boom, right there. Alright, so that is fantastic. Honestly, that play 
could have cost me the match, but thankfully we were able to get a lot of buildup on the chandelier right there. Taking a look at our third match here, we're going to be going up against a friend actually. This is really, really funny. Uh, he's gonna be leading Magnazone. So against our Togekiss, we're gonna safe swap into Shadow Machamp. And then they come in with the Garchomp, right as we were about to throw the Cross Chop. Not the biggest deal in the world. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and continue to Cross Chop down against this Garchomp. Pretty much the play here, although the Magnezone could be problematic later on. We don't know what their third Pokemon is. If it's a Gyarados, this could be really, really bad for us. So at this point, I decide to shield against the Shadow Machamp. It was a Sand Tomb, so definitely a waste of a shield right there. And we end up both going down because of that. So not the best, especially because now he has two shields up compared to my one shield. This is not good. They do come in with Gyarados though, so this is actually pretty solid for us. I kind of figured there might have been a Gyarados in the back, and uh, against Togekiss, this is definitely ideal. So just going through against the Gyarados here, again, like, they have two shields up on us, it is not looking too good. Basically when it comes down to Master League, whenever your opponent has two shields up on you, that is a strong win condition for them. Alright, so at this point, I have to decide, is it going to be a fake out or is it going to be the wild charge? So it was a fake out with the mirror shot right there. We go ahead and hit them once more, and at this point, I'm not sure, it could be a wild charge. I decide to shield, and it was. So this is good and bad, um, because their Gyarados does have waterfall, this is extremely bad for the Chandelure. So we throw the flame charge right there, they are out of shields, but unfortunately they did build up a ton of energy. So that wasn't too great for us, and uh, at the end of the day, they ended up conceding the match, but uh, they would have most definitely won that. Taking a look at match number four right now, let's see what we got as a lead here. We currently have two wins and one loss. So we have a Mamoswine, we're going to safe swap into Shadow Machamp. Alright, that brings out the Togekiss, that's very, very good. We're going to go ahead and throw the Rock Slide here. Now normally there is a bulk point issue on this Shadow Machamp, but because we actually safe swapped, we were able to get to that in time, so that was really solid for us. Now at this point, I could come back in with Chandelure or Togekiss. Togekiss is kind of the optimal choice here because we really just want to farm them down before they get to an Ancient Power, which we're actually able to do. Alright, so I'm expecting Mamoswine, yes. Alright, so Mamoswine comes back in. They're going to build up for an Avalanche. Yep, they're good to go. We are not going to shield this right now. So assuming that they have a Steel-type in the back and not a Gyarados, Chandelure with two shields is going to sweep this line because with the boost that it gets from Flame Charge and just the Incinerate as a general move, yeah, we're gonna be fine here. So they throw the Bulldoze, we shield that correctly, they come back in with the Excadrill, so I did call that correctly as well. And now we're just gonna go for the Flame Charge, get a ton of uh, boost here, and this is gonna be solid for us, guys. So going for the second Flame Charge right now, they gotta shield this. All right, so fantastic, getting rid of both of their shields. We have one shield left. Of course, we're gonna safe shield this. They just threw their Bulldoze on the Mamoswine. They don't have enough energy. And the Incinerate went through. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to kill, but that's okay as well, because now we pretty much have enough to just go for another Flame Charge. So fantastic, we're definitely in a really solid position, and we finish off the match. So we currently have three wins and one loss. Um, the next win would pretty much securely get us to Legend. So our final match is going to be up against a Legend right now, not going to be an easy fight to win. And they have a Shadow Snorlax, so yeah, it's really not going to be an easy fight now. Snorlax as a lead Pokemon is really difficult to go up against because you have no idea what their back two Pokemon are going to be. So uh, we're definitely going to have to take a gamble here. So we'll have to watch how they play out this first matchup with Togekiss. So after we no-shield the Body Slam, we're going to go for the Ancient Power here. And uh, we kind of have to see what they decide to do. If they shield, we're going to swap. Okay, so we're going to swap right now into Shadow Machamp. And uh, I'm assuming this is going to be a Body Slam. Yes, okay, so Body Slam comes through right there. Still hits us pretty hard, but they actually come back in with Gyarados, and it does have Waterfall. So if they don't shield this right now, we're going to be in a really, really good position. And they don't. All right, so fantastic. So they only had one shield left at that point. Um, if I was them, I probably wouldn't have shielded either. We're going to shield against the Gyarados right now from the Aqua Tail, because we really need to take this thing down. Chandelure is super vulnerable to those waterfalls, and we have no idea what their backline is either, right? Like, we're still missing that last Pokemon. Alright, so Body Slam against Chandelure, nothing to worry about, but uh, we still have no idea what their final Pokemon is. And it's a Togekiss. Okay, so we both have one shield right now. I have a bit more energy gain against them, so this could work to our favor. We're going to go for the uh, Flame Charge right now, get a boost for the Incinerate. 
All right, so far so good, so far so good. They get that third charm through though, which is not good. This is a really, really bad thing for us. All right, so the extra charm through was really, really bad, but we were able to get an incinerate through, so kind of evened out there. All right, so incinerate went through, final incinerate, and that is a GG. Honestly, kind of close in the end there though. And against the Snorlax for that final victory, guys, like this is what took me to legend. That was such a crazy match. Like that was literally such a gatekeeper match and uh, it felt really good to win it. It felt so good to win it. And yeah, you know, even though I only ran this team for like the last, I don't know, like 100 ELO, it was really solid against the meta. And with that, my friends, we have now officially reached Legend in Season 9 of Pokemon Go Battle League. Oh man, it felt so good to reach this again. So overall, this was definitely a really difficult season. There were plenty of great players throughout the entire thing. And uh, of course, we had plenty of bugs, glitches, inconsistencies, and lag to go with that too. So uh, that made things fun. I do think the addition of Master League and Ultra League Premier Cup Classics were really, really solid. Like, I think there is such a big disconnect between Niantic and just the player base because like, I think a lot of players don't have the capabilities of getting extra large Pokemon to level 50 but uh, you know can definitely find it reasonable to get level 40 Pokemon. But here's the thing, we only have two leagues out of the entire season that are level 40 themed, so that's really problematic. And the same thing is gonna happen in season 10, so I don't really know how I feel about that. I mean, I guess you guys do know how I feel about that. It's not good. Obviously, I want some change in regards to that, but uh, for whatever reason, Niantic doesn't feel like that's necessary. Now, with that being said, from my experience, I do wanna give you guys a few tips and tricks for season 10 of Pokemon Go Battle League, whether you're going for rank 20 or for veteran, expert, or legend even. Um, hopefully this should help you guys out. This is pretty much what I did throughout the season. So number one is study the metas. Honestly, that is probably the easiest thing I could say right now, but believe it or not, a lot of people don't study the metas. That being said though, this leads me on over to my next tip, which is going to be that I highly recommend watching Twitch streamers. This gives you a real-time example in terms of their battling. You're gonna see them lose, you're gonna see them win, but most importantly, you're gonna be able to learn from their battles and you're gonna be able to learn or I guess adjust yourself to the meta that's currently taking place. Of course, the ELO range will vary and that is also going to be very dependent on what kind of Pokemon teams you're gonna see. But for the most part, you should see a very consistent line of Pokemon if you are able to watch Twitch streamers on a regular basis. Trust me, like this helped me out so much during season eight and season nine. I cannot stress this enough, like find some Twitch streamers that you guys like and uh, honestly, just make sure that you guys tune in because watching their battles will help you out a ton before you run your own. The next one I have for you guys is going to be to learn how to play with one to two solid teams per rotation. So there's plenty of good recommendations uh, when it comes down to common team builds that you guys could be running. There are so many good PVP YouTubers out there. So I really do recommend trying to just, you know, find somebody you can literally just type in Pokemon Go Great league uh, season 10 and then you can sort the videos by like the ones that were uploaded within the past week look up those videos uh, see what people are going to be running find a youtuber that you really like uh, there's definitely a lot out there if you're able to build one of the teams that they have in their videos and you guys just really need to understand how that team works if you do that i guarantee you're going to have much better success and more so if you do that with two different teams, you can kind of alternate between the teams depending on what you're seeing in the meta. This also goes in line with watching Twitch streamers because you're gonna be able to see what's currently in the meta real time, and then you can apply your own team to that meta and kind of see how you can win against certain team comps. Like, you know, when you're watching the Twitch streamers, kind of talk out loud to yourself and think, if I was running my team, what could I have done here? Like, should I farm down? Should I throw my move? Should I try to bait this person? Just think about that stuff when you're watching the Twitch streamers or even the YouTubers. The next one is is going to be a very easy one that I recommend every single season. Get to rank 20 as soon as possible. Like, as soon as possible. Do not wait. There are literally so many people who wait to get to rank 20, and, like, you're missing out on so much Stardust and so many legendary Pokemon. I kid you not, I probably got over 60 legendary Pokemon during this past rotation, and that's putting it, like, lightly. I probably got more. But, uh, yeah, honestly, guys, like, get to rank 20 as soon as possible, even if you're not in it to go for Legend or for Veteran or for anything like that. The legendary Pokemon, the Stardust, you get after you reach rank 20 is so good like one of the best things in the game in terms of getting resources so yeah get to rank 20 as soon as possible uh, the next thing is going to be to learn how to count moves
items. So this is actually extremely important that a lot of people don't actually do. Pay attention to the move counts. Like for example, uh, Shadow Machamp takes five counters to get to a cross chop. It takes seven to get to a rock slide. This is important to know because if your opponent throws at five and your Pokemon you know, is resistant to fighting type moves, you can avoid a shielding right there. For example, if it would actually take super effective damage from Rock Slide, if it throws at 5, you don't have to shield because you know that's not a Rock Slide. So things like that actually make a massive difference in terms of climbing higher in your ELO range because some people just don't count moves. Seven Even Please is actually a really great creator in terms of uh, making the infographs for these counts. I'm going to leave a link to his Twitter in the description below. The next thing I have for you guys is going to be to invest wisely into your Pokemon so your PvP IV spreads do matter. Here's the thing when it comes down to PvP spreads, like they don't matter in the beginning, but in the long run they are going to matter, especially if you end up climbing higher in the ELO range, you're going to go up against opponents you have really good IV spreads. But just in general, as a common rule, I would say like anything sub 100 is probably good. So anything within like the top 100 rankings would be solid to invest in. With that being said though, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in terms of uh, tips for season 10. Um, but in case you guys want some more general tips and tricks for Pokemon Go, check out these videos right here. But before you go, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you all real soon in the next one.